2024, the year of Kevlar and edgeless paddle innovation. And with the 6.0 Ruby seemingly sold out constantly, it's my aim to test and review other options so you know what's good and what's fairly mediocre right now. Mark Pickleball, the creators of my new favorite paddles under $100, in particular the Pure Hybrid Paddle, have created their own version of a Kevlar carbon fiber hybrid paddle called the Kinetic. So without further ado, let's dig straight into it. The Kinetic comes in at a price of $150 and you can use code STS Pickleball to save 10%, making the price just 135 bucks. So the original innovators of the Kevlar carbon fiber hybrid surface material was Pickleball Apes with their ProLine Energy and the ProLine Energy S. The first thing I want to cover is the question, is there any difference between Aramid and Kevlar? According to Google, Kevlar is the trademarked brand name for the Aramid fiber made by DuPont. However, due to it being the first para Aramid developed, its name is synonymous with the term Aramid. So no matter if a company is saying Aramid or Kevlar or DuPont Kevlar, all these terms are relating to the exact same material. The next question I want to answer is what's better, a 100% Kevlar face or carbon fiber Kevlar blend? If you had asked me this a couple months ago when I had first received my 6.0 Ruby, I would have told you a 100% Kevlar face is my pick as the very unique properties of 100% Kevlar make soft shots feel plush and power oriented shots like drives and serves feel very powerful off the face. But from the comments I'm seeing consistently on my 6.0 Ruby review and a lot of the discussions I'm reading in other paddle communities, it seems there's more to the story here. A lot of people are saying they're losing spin after a month of heavy play and that the sweet spot of their paddle feels much smoother to the touch than when they first received the Ruby. So as of now, given how consistently I keep hearing and reading about this potential durability and longevity issue, I would have to say that the answer to what's likely better right now is Kevlar carbon fiber blended surface material. You still get some of the unique properties of Kevlar like that plush feel, which makes the control game better than a standard thermoformed 100% carbon fiber paddle, but you also get some of the power aspects of a thermoformed Gen 2 paddle, sort of a nice blend of both worlds and none of the durability and longevity issues I mentioned before. So in comes the Mark Pickleball's Kinetic Hybrid Paddle utilizing the most popular hybrid shape in the space with that nice taper which gives it a huge sweet spot, top tier spin with manageable power and pop, all while utilizing the highest quality DuPont Kevlar and Japanese Torrey T700 raw carbon fiber blended together for the surface material. And again, all of these premium quality materials materials for 135 bucks, which is a great value. I like the clean aesthetic and design of the face along with the white edge guard and white grip. Speaking of the grip, the Kinetic is thankfully using a one piece grip so there is no exposed polymer on the sides like you'd find in a Diadem Edge 18K, any of the Paddletech paddles or the Engage paddles, which is a huge pet peeve of mine. So I'm really, really glad that the Mark Pickleball paddles are utilizing a solid one piece grip that feels premium in the hand. Also, the Kinetic's grip is injected with foam to dampen vibration, which is a big help if you have tennis elbow or a sensitive wrist. Notable specs of the Kinetic are the average weight of 8.1 ounces, a 16 millimeter core thickness, grip length of 5.3 inches, and a grip circumference of 4 and 1 8 inch. As far as twist weight goes, I have twist weight and swing weight measurements taken with and without lead tape. Without lead tape, I measured a twist weight of 6.58 and a swing weight of 116. Then I added my usual 5 inches of one one gram per inch of lead tape starting one inch out from the grip and going up the throat into the sides of the paddle and the resulting twist weight is now 7.18 and the resulting swing weight is 118. Stock swing weights for the kinetic paddle are ranging from 114 to 119 but nothing above 119 so this will depend on the paddle that you receive. Spin wise the kinetic comes in at 2142 rpm. Anything over 2000 rpm is definitely top tier and will create noticeable dip over the net on drives and serves. That little bit of extra dwell time you get with the blended Kevlar surface also creates a really nice feel and helps place your shots while adding solid spin numbers. I feel very confident ripping drives at an aggressive pace and I see the ball dipping down and into the court every time which looks and feels super awesome. We have the Sixer Ruby coming in at a stock RPM of 2291. Now that is the stock RPM and in my testing I am seeing a little bit more spin loss with 100% Kevlar in comparison to Kevlar carbon fiber blended paddles and traditional raw carbon fiber paddles. It does depend on the brand, the quality of the material that is used. But in this case with the Kinetic, Mark Pickleball is utilizing Torre T700 raw carbon fiber along with DuPont Kevlar. So it 
seems to be a really premium quality surface. We have the Pickleball Apes Proline Energy at 1980 RPM and the Pickleball Apes Proline Energy S at 2104 RPM. So based on these metrics, the Kinetic is getting more spin than the Pickleball Apes paddles, but a bit less spin than the 100% Kevlar Ruby, but won't have the potential durability and longevity issues that the Ruby might have. Power-wise, the Kinetic definitely has some power to it. It's close to, but just slightly less power than the Ruby, and it also has more power than the original double black diamond which would be its very popular carbon fiber counterpart so the blended face material is definitely creating more force off the face on drives and serves for me the kinetic and the ruby are my favorites for drives and serves in comparison to the proline energy and the proline energy s which are a little bit more plush and sort of softer off the face i definitely am getting a lot more power with the ruby and with the kinetic in comparison so for power the kinetic comes in at a 9.3 in comparison to the ruby at 9.6 we can see the ruby does have a bit more of that trampoline effect off the face which gives it more power but also makes it a bit harder to control distance wise the proline energy comes in at an 8.7 being the softest feeling off the face for Kevlar offerings, and the Proline Energy S comes in at a 9.1, being very close to the Kinetic, but just a touch weaker on drives. As far as miles per hour go, we are talking about a 0.2 to 0.6 difference in miles per hour between the four paddles, which is why I like to do my ratings out of 10 so you can get a general reference and gauge it more easily. For me as a viewer, knowing it has a 0.2 miles per hour difference doesn't really help my mind grasp the difference as well as something out of 10, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on what helps you the most as I'm here for you, not for me. Pop wise, the Kinetic has top tier pop for sure. Punch volleys and hand battles are a breeze with this battle. Quite a bit more pop than the Ruby and more on par with the feeling of the Proline Energy S with maybe a touch more pop than the Energy S. So for pop, the Kinetic comes in at 8.9, whereas the Ruby comes in at 8.4, the Proline came in at 8.5, and the Proline Energy S came in at 8.8. So very similar and again, we are talking about a maximum of one mile per hour difference between the four paddles. The sweet spot for the Kinetic is closer to the Ruby's massive sweet spot than the Proline Energy S or the Proline Energy. Again, all four of these paddles are wonderful paddles outside of the potential durability issue of the Ruby. We are talking about very small differences, but at the same time, those small differences could be the difference between a ball going where you want or falling short. I have more confidence with the Kinetic than I do with the Proline Energy and the Proline Energy S, and about the same confidence on off-center shots in comparison to the Ruby. So for Sweet Spot, the Kinetic receives a solid 9.1 out of 10. Comparing that to the Ruby at 9.3, the Proline Energy at 8.4, and the Proline Energy S at 8.8, we can see again no real massive difference, but the Kinetic is definitely the best multi-material paddle and even plays quite similar to the Ruby without any durability issues and for quite a bit less money. Lastly, let's dive into one of my favorite sections, Control. Control for me wasn't quite as fun when when I first started pickleball, but these days control is everything for me. I love controlling the tempo, being confident on resets, reading my opponent's paddles, and outplaying them with confidence. Paddles like the Kinetic give me this confidence. That hybrid shape, along with a solid sweet spot, makes this a breeze. I will say with a bit higher pop, control can be a little tougher if you're not careful, but again that pop also makes it easier to speed up the ball and win hand battles, so it's a trade-off that you'll need to weigh before making a purchase. But when you take the sweet spot and the spin and the nice bit of dwell time into account for placing shots, those aspects definitely buffer the control score for the Kinetic outside of its poppier nature. So for control, the Kinetic receives an 8.8 .8 out of 10. Comparing this to the Ruby at 9, the Proline Energy at 8.3, and the Proline Energy S at an 8.5, we can see again, feel-wise, the Kinetic is closer to the Ruby than the Proline Energy S, and again, at a cheaper price point, which is nice. But keep in mind, it is a poppier paddle, but I do think again, the dwell time, the spin and the sweet spot really should be factored into the control game as a whole. If you want to see my review for the best protective glasses in the space, click here, smash that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this one. Have a freaking wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.